Ever since I was small, I was fascinated about the supernatural, learning as much as I could, learning if there are ways to communicate with those who have passed on into the other life. So, knowing that I had a vacation coming up to visit my friend in the States, I figured I would look up some local haunted areas near where he lived. So, upon an internet search, I found a local site for hauntings near his area. When I checked out this page, I found something pretty remarkable. Legend of an entire abandoned cemetery atop a mountain somewhere out on a place called October Mountain. This area is surrounded by legends and lore of spirits and many other demonic things. But this graveyard, this silent cemetery as it was called, piqued my interest. So, seeing this, I packed my bags and then headed to the States where I met up with my friend and soon we were on route towards our destination to find the local cemetery. It seemed as though we were traveling for miles. The road just seemed endless. I asked my friend if he'd ever been this way before. He said no. That didn't fill me with a lot of confidence. Though the road seemed pretty well populated by other vehicle motorists. And from there, we continue. Now, this road, I must say, was far from populated. It was a crude dirt road, but one lane, and not in a good state of repair. I tell you, I have driven on many roads in my life, and this road was absolutely deplorable. I mean, it was washed out, it was ruined, and absolutely horribly brutal to ride in. I was so glad that my friend had an off-road vehicle, otherwise I fear I would have lost my head. It was odd though. Early on, even at this stage, you could feel it in the air. There was a silence creeping in. No life, no sound, no anything. A foreboding feeling of, you should almost stay away. And maybe that's why the roads were so bad. Maybe it was even the mountain itself trying to say, Beware, danger lurks in my shadow. As we came across, I saw red fabric upon a tree. My friend joked with me that it was a blood-soaked rag. I laughed too, but given the chill in the air, still in the back of my mind, I thought, What if... The road was still astounding, even though there was so much water everywhere, it was just absolutely horrible. I have to say, it was interfering with our travels greatly. This it just goes on. I mean, it was it was so amazing. It was like being in the middle of nowhere, you know. I mean, it was just absolutely just yawning stretches of woods and swamp and water. He said it reminded him of a place near where he lived as a child. I asked him where was that. He said nearby. I said, how is that possible? That a place like this could reside anywhere else. At that point I decided to make a mental note, check out his house and see where he lives. As our journey traveled on, we found ourselves up a steep ingrade, which this video does poor to show, but this hill went straight up and was poorly, poorly done. It looked as though it had been paved over probably 20 or 30 years ago, but had not been touched since. How odd we both thought it was that this road itself, the only road that we had come across since we had hit this mountain that was paved. Why was it not serviced? Why was it in such a horrible, horrible state? We could only figure that it must have been abandoned, much like the graveyard. It was odd to us, we did not quite understand everything, but we were curious as to find out the whys of things. 
Why was this side abandoned? Why were the roads never kept? Why were the trees so stark and black? We stopped off to try to find directions at a fork in the road. We had come up the hill and found ourselves with three options. My friend happened to notice a sign upon a tree, so we got out and walked up. He told me that Lee was a nearby neighboring town, yet it was not near where we needed to be. We had our three routes, and we were lost. We figured maybe we would press on in the direction we were going. Down there. And as we were looking around, I happened to notice a small peak sticking out of the woods. Perhaps maybe a house, maybe a ranger's station, maybe something. Women. So we decided that we would go move in and investigate. Upon reaching the structure, we realized what it was. It was an old outhouse. Apparently this is where the women go. Though sadly we never found its sister counterpart, or brother I guess I would say, this strange structure was out here all on its own. We found a crude date on the inside, 1971. Someone had carved the name. Something about it was eerily chilly and filled us with dread. So. Leaving there that quickly, we jumped back into the car and drove on. This section of road seemed almost welcoming, almost as if it wanted us there. There were no ruts, no holes, and mostly no water. So we weren't sure, but it seemed to be the right way, even though the stark black trees and dead earth below ushered us on. Then. Finally, as we came to the top of a hill, as I was gazing off the opposite direction, my friend noticed something in the woods, and I inquired as to what it was he had found and saw. He said, I think I see a stone. And I said, is it? So we stopped the vehicle, and from there I climbed out and got my equipment and we moved on into the woods. Once out of the vehicle, we started to walk towards the area where he had seen the stone. It was strange, yet again to sound redundant how eerily quiet and now cold it was. Yeah. As a bit of snow had started to fly in the air, it reminded us that winter was very close. How funny it was we were looking for a cemetery in the season of the dead. And I thought it odd that he had seen it from so far. But, sure enough, as we entered into the opening, we saw stones. It was odd. It was here, but odd. On the tree, he found a placard. And on that placard were the names of every poor soul buried up on top of this accursed mountain. Still no reason, no logic could dictate as to why these people were buried up here. But sure enough, upon wandering around, we had seen many stones. Sadly, it appeared as though very few were standing, and some might have either suffered supernatural damage, the elemental, or maybe the would-be traveler. I came across a stone with no writing. I wished to see what it was, so I tried lifting the heavy stone and flipping it as to see if there were any writings. Sadly, there was not. So I continued walking 
along, trying to document as many of these stones as I could. But the cold was sinking in, and every now and then I had a feeling of being watched. I began to think each one of these stones laying down was a person. Yet, the area being so vast, and so few stones, it made me wonder how many more people were buried underneath those leaves. Could it have indeed been a full cemetery? And if so, were they simply lost in time now? Yet the true answer and the true riddle of this place eluded me still. Why? Why here? Why was it these people were buried? No record ever shows of a town or a village or any form of settlement on top of this mountain. And as you've seen here today, that road is not safe. It's not a traveling road that one would take easily. It's not going to happen. And back then, vehicles were not that great. For you see, this was more likely the horse and carriage era, as most of the stones dated 1857. So it makes one wonder why would so many people make a trek up this far to bury their dead. We did discover a large number of children were buried here. At least five of them were under the age of 15. There were reports of sounds and strange things happening out here. Though sadly, the only audio that was, uh, was attempted to be captured failed. But out here, things seem strange. And as the sun began to set, we knew that our time here had ended. And we must leave. For legends are not, I wish not to be in these woods upon the dark. So, my associate and I left, and we planned to make a second endeavor upon this mountain as soon as we can. For with the snows coming, most of these paths and roads will be absolutely impossible, and the supernatural will be roaming free upon the mountain with no eyes to see what dark things it does upon its surface.